how are you? Welcome to the Total Water Polo Podcast. I hope you're well. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you're listening to this episode from. Today, I'm delighted to welcome our first Italian to the Total Water Polo Podcast in the form of the Setter Roses, Julia Amolo. She's one of my favourite players, actually. She's a left-hander. She's a great player. And actually, I don't think she quite gets the credit that she's probably due. I think she's quite an underrated player. She's been really successful at every club she's been to, whether it's winning the Len Trophies at Imperia or whether it was the, uh, the league titles at Olympiacos or the league titles even at her current club, Equipe Horizonte. She's got a great word to say and she speaks excellently, so I hope you're about to enjoy this episode. Just before we start, don't forget to make full use of this podcast discount code at wherewaterpolo.com so use podcast 10 podcast 10 in the checkout and you can get 10% off your next order from Wherewater Polo there's some really cool stash on there or whether it's team kit you're after there's some good stuff there so make sure you make and uh, I just want to say a mega thanks course, to, thank you very everyone to everyone who has, has liked, liked a review, subscribed or subscribed to us on YouTube, Spotify, on YouTube wherever you're getting the podcast we appreciate it so much I know the athletes do they get to share their stories with you and you get to enjoy it. So thank you so much for everyone that's done that. And if you haven't done it yet, if you could spare 20 seconds just to click follow or subscribe, we'd appreciate that massively. Let's get this podcast started though. And this is the lovely voice of Julia Emolo. Total Water Polo Podcast, Julia Amolo, how are you? I'm fine, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Thank you very much for uh, for joining us. I know that you're really busy at the moment preparing for um, for the Euros, but also the Sardinia Cup. Have you just come back from training? Uh, yes, but uh, now I am at home, so I can uh, have practice and uh, uh, have more time uh, for uh, for myself. So it's like some days off uh, to waiting for a new um, new part of preparation, and I I, I enjoy this. Uh, it's something new for me, so I hope to answer good to to everything. No, I'm sure it'll be perfect, and um, it's a rarity that you can get time off. So thank you very much for spending it um, spending it with us and the listeners. Um, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, when we interview top players, we normally ask how they got into the sport. So, do you remember how you uh, you started playing water polo? Oh, so many years ago, I I was twelve years old, and um, I was a young swimmer, and um, I didn't like anymore. I want something different. I I prefer to have uh, a teammate. And uh, I was watching the um, young boys because in my club uh, there wasn't the um, the girls for uh, for a team. So I start with boys to play water polo, and then the next year they decide to start to build a team for a woman uh, water polo. And this was my first uh, experience. And then uh, years by years I improve myself. I grow up and. I had my my career. Yeah, um, you said there that there wasn't a girls' club when you uh, you started. Um, how easy is it for girls in Italy at the moment to start playing water polo? Are there, a lot of swimming clubs got water polo clubs that um, attach to them, or is was it just back then that there wasn't many clubs around, and now there is? No, now is very easy. I think um, comparing to my period is very easy to start to play water polo because uh, first of all they have uh, more example to follow and um, the club are a lot uh, they give you the opportunity to start to play in uh, every age uh, even if you are uh, six years old you can start like uh, the tournament that they are doing uh, Abba Waba and if I think about this tournament, I would like to go back uh, when I I was uh, seven years old and play this kind of tournament. I think for babies is uh, is something that they will remember forever. 
And now I think uh, is is easier than in my age when I start. Okay, okay. And obviously, you said you swam, and then you you started playing with the boys, and then you had your own team. Um, obviously, you were you are a left hander. Um, were you any good when you started off, or did it take a lot of practice and a lot of hard work to get good, or were you kind of naturally gifted? Uh, it was hard because I was the only one lefty. So uh, for every mo- movement that I was watching for the from the coach from my teammate was the, completely the opposite. So I should use my brain to change the side and do the same for my for my movement. But it was also funny because I did so many mistakes that they helped me to to understand how was working for me and uh, is it was not hard but it was funny if i if i can remember a lot of left-handed players uh, deny it but do you think as a left-hander you get a lot more opportunities than you would if you were a right-hander or in other words are, are you kind of pleased that you grew up being left-handed because it gives you a bit of an advantage uh, it's nice question i um... Uh, I think that uh, the player that I am now is uh, yes, is because I am lefty, but is is not depending only for this. Is depending also like how the kind of person that I am, the kind of athlete that I want to be, uh, because I love help the team. I love to help my teammate and uh, work for them. And this is not. Uh, important if you are left or right uh, so okay um, to be left-hander is uh, easier for something for for uh, some reason but uh, also difficult if you see you are you are like uh, dif- dif- different from the your teammate yeah. uh, okay mm, i think should could be the same if i was uh, the right hand sure sure and when did it become clear to you that you um, it, water polo was more than just a, a weekend hobby, that you'd be able to play professionally and then play for your country? Yeah, I started to play with the young national team in 2006 and it was my first uh, experience out of Italy and was uh, an explosion of uh, emotion because I was very young. I was 14 years old and uh, I never played uh, high level water polo only in my club. And there I realized that this kind of feeling I wanted to have for a long time, as much as I can, uh, because it's something that you cannot find out of the of your sport and uh, in the years uh, 2007 I had my first world championship with uh, the senior team in Melbourne and I was a baby but I can remember every single minute that I was there because it was my first one and I was like uh, in one different world everything was like a kind of magic uh, because uh, I was playing next to the best player in the world so I was just try to learn as much as I can yeah so I mean you're talking about the national team now we will talk about we'll talk about that slightly later but I just want to first talk about your playing career um you're at the same club for a long time your first club uh Imperia yeah um we kind of um, mainstream water polo fans, if you want to call it that, know them for obviously the Euroleague titles and the uh, the Len Cups that they they won back then. Um, but how would you describe the club to people that aren't familiar with it, maybe outside of Italy, and how do they operate and uh, what are they up to now? For Imperia was uh, was uh, difficult because we are a very small uh, town, and uh, the what we did with uh, my team was something uh, incredible. We start from the low level and we arrived to win the, the first uh, title uh, in Italian championship. So we did something that I think um, cannot, be, cannot happen again. And this is nice if you think uh, with, with your teammate uh, that you grow up, 
you did the, you you wrote the history and uh, we arrived to make people talk about imperia also in europe and nobody knows where imperia was <laughs> but uh, we did it and it was something really nice yeah yeah and um that that's a, a huge achievement and you it's, it's quite funny you say that imperia is a very small town a few years later obviously you were joining a huge club uh, in a huge city uh, in Athens, uh, Olympiakos. Yeah. The, the best experience <laughs> in my life. Well, well, let's talk. Let's hear about it then. Um, completely different club. Um, what was it like in Piraeus? What was it like playing there, winning the titles, playing with some top players? Tell us everything. Uh, okay, I decide after 11 years, I move from this small town to Athens. You can, you can imagine... <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what I did. I was not speaking, talking English at all. So it was uh, like a bet for myself. The first three months was like, uh, okay, I have to learn English. If not, I will uh, talk uh, alone by myself in the mirror. <laughs> so uh, let's try. And uh, this uh, was my best experience because I was playing with some of the best player in the world they helped me to grow up uh, like person like athlete they give me a lot and i can just say thank you to them and i have very good relationship with a lot of almost all of them and they have they are like my best friends uh, we we talk every day uh, i have a really good relationship with the three sisters plevritu I am like the fourth uh, in their family. And this is something that you will remember forever. And I can just say thank you because I can talk to you in English now because of them. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Well, we, we owe a lot to them, all the listeners as well. Um, you, you say that if you hadn't learned the language, you would have been sitting on your own in your room talking to yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's not entirely true because you did have, obviously, one of your teammates, yeah. um, Roberta Bianconi, with you. How how much does it help and we're seeing it across Europe at the moment a few players from different countries are moving to other clubs because they know that obviously the water polo is good but also they've got a teammate from a national team there how helpful is that do you think for you in your experience a having lot, someone in Italian there with you she helps me a lot because uh, of course uh, I could ask her everything she was uh, there from one year before than me so she knew everything she could help me and she did it uh, and we enjoy so much the time there i sometimes when we are together we remember what we did in these three years and it's uh, it's uh, amazing i always i said to the young um, girls if you have opportunity to go out of italy do it because it's uh, something that open your mind and um, not only like athlete, but like a person. And um, a lot of players, um, wh when we talk about Olympiakos, particularly Olympiakos, uh, they don't ever really want to leave. Um, there was a few players I spoke to in Budapest recently who were at the club and they were talking about their future and they were talking about whether they would stay at Olympiakos and leave and they were talking about how infectious it is and how they really... They, even if they did want to leave, they felt that they couldn't because they loved the place so much. Did you feel like that? Yes. I Yes, I didn't want to leave from Greece, <laughs> to be honest. I was looking for a house because I said, okay, this is the, the place of my life. But uh, then uh, the... My situation changed because I had the thing because of the medal in the Rio in the Olympic game, I had the opportunity to become a police woman. And uh, so this was a huge opportunity for the future. But uh, you should go back ho home, like uh, to play in one club in Italy. And, uh, you know, you cannot play water polo forever. And uh, I understood that was uh, something important to think about my future and keep playing water polo. And um, I said, okay, I have to go back, but when I can, when I have a weekend, uh, one week off, I will come back here with you. And did, with this was I did. 
uh, I will never forget what uh, I, I like um, a piece of my heart is there. Nice. Well put. And you, you said there that you had to come back uh, and, and be a, a police officer. Um, we've seen a few things like this on, on social media, you know, the, the order of the police award. Do you want to just explain to everyone exactly? We have a question from one of the listeners in, in part two, I think about this. Do you want to explain to our listeners what exactly that, that means? You know, you coming back and were you training whilst whilst having a full time job, or was it just no, a ceremonial thing? The the situation is that until you are in national team, your job is to have practice and try to uh, do your best, like water polo player. From the moment that you are not in national team anymore, uh, you will start to have your uh, job in the in the office like a police woman. And um, it's like a part of police uh, we call Fiamme Oro. And um, it's the athletic side of police. Of police. And um, we have a lot of uh, athletes in every sport, from swimmers, uh, uh, but also in athletic, uh, all the sport. The best player, they try to have also this uh, part of their life. Okay. Um, did it annoy you that you had to do that or was it just something you have to do and you don't have a choice? No, no, no. Uh, I, I felt inside of myself that was the best choice for me. And um, also because the medal in Rio was uh, like a, a dream. And this, uh, maybe without this medal, we could never have this chance. So I said, okay, I, I deserve this and I want to have. Okay, fine. So obviously you return back from Olympiakos with uh, all the trophies and the medals and, and, and things like this. Um, you spend a season in Rapallo, yeah. um, a, ni a nice well-run club, uh, before joining um, the biggest club in Italy. I think it's fair to say one of the most historic clubs uh, in Europe, really. Um, yeah. I think between 1992 and 2011, you won all but one of the league titles, the the club, uh, and as well as that, obviously winning the Euro League um, and now the Champions League um, eight times. That's a lot of pressure to play for a club. Is there pressure on you as the players to to perform and to win with that kind of heritage behind the club? Uh, it's normal to have pressure. Because uh, you are, and is, the pressure is not from the club, but uh, from the people outside of the club, uh, and it's normal because when you are the um, the best team, everybody are waiting for this that you are gonna win. But is if you win the championship, is like okay, they did it. If you don't, oh my god, they didn't. <laughs> so uh, it's like to fight uh, to. To prove to everybody uh, that that you are the best, and this is the best for an athlete uh, to have the opportunity to make practice uh, with uh, your teammate uh, that also are in national team. And um, my coach uh, Martina Micheli, she is uh, like uh, like the best because. Uh, she believe a lot in what she is doing. Every single minute of the practice, there is a reason why we are doing this. And uh, I had until now three years uh, really high level of water polo, and I think I did the best choice for myself. In the last few years, you've won the league title. You won a few cups here and there as well. Um, as I did mention. Um, uh, Equipe Horizonte are the most successful European uh, women's women's team in the Euro League. They've won it eight times. Um, in in recent times, the European competitions haven't been a, as as good or as favourable. Um, is that a competition that you and your teammates and your coach really really want to win? Yes, uh, the dream is to win uh, the Europa Cup, but uh, we were not lucky this year. The COVID uh, kill us because uh, in the tournament uh, um, that we had in uh, December, the week uh, before, 
five girls had COVID. And uh, so we decided to go because we, we wanted to, to try, but we knew that it was hard to pass the, turn, the, the, the first step of this uh, Europa Cup. And uh, years before uh, was the year of um, qualification tournament. We didn't qualify for the Olympics and it was hard uh, because, you know, psycho psychological is uh, hard when you are not going to the Olympics. But we did a really good job to rebuild our uh, situation and uh, go to win the Italian championship. We won the 20 cup uh, for Horizonte. And uh, it, I think, was really important for us to f follow the moment, but don't lose ourselves. And uh, the year of COVID 2020, I think we were the strongest team that we could be but covid won <laughs> and we stopped the the all the championship but never know the future maybe next year will be uh, from our side so we will see yeah yeah we will see and speaking of of next year um we're seeing already loads of really good players heading to italy um the league seems to be at a higher standard that it's been in, in a few years, um, there's there's four really really top teams and some other teams outside the top four that are, are are breaking through a little bit and trying to you know unhinge that structure. Um, based on your experience, obviously you've played in Greece as well. Uh, do you think the Italian league is 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 making the progress that we we all think it is? Um, do you think it's quite an underrated league? Do you think people don't rate it as highly as they they probably should? For last year, I think we had a really good level because the first four teams uh, were so strong. So, like, you are going to play uh, for the semi-final and you are fighting for. It's not like a game that you are you know that you are going to win. And these improve the championship, but also the, um, the players. Because if you are playing a high level of matches you will uh, have also uh, when you are playing for national team so yeah. next year i think will be the same or maybe better uh, because uh, maybe more uh, foreigner will move the level will be higher and we will enjoy it i think yeah yeah and um if you could say one thing about the Italian league that makes it a little bit special and makes it different from the other leagues in Europe, what what characteristic would you say the Italian league has? Uh, this that every Saturday is a, is like a, a final. You have to uh, prepare every Saturday match. So every week is like uh, with different title. So. Uh, is not boring uh, like okay uh, we are playing when with one team that we are winning 32 no never uh, you are fighting every saturday for the three points that you need when you arrive at the end because every point count at the end even for the um, for the schedule uh, if you are playing at home or not this is very important when the playoffs start so this, I think, that every Saturday and every week you are working hard for uh, for the match. Yeah, You're m making me really excited for the league now. I'm, I <laughs> wish it could uh, wish it could be starting soon. Um, okay, well we touched on it earlier, and now we'll talk about um, your kind of career in the national team. Um, you said earlier that you made your debut in Melbourne at the World Championships when you were a, when you, in your words, when you were a baby. Mm. Um, what was it like breaking through into a, uh, one of the best teams that we've we've seen in the women's game? How uh, how much of an honour was it, and how much did you learn from some of the players around you? I learn everything. Like every brief that they did, I try to to learn how they were doing. I knew that I was playing with the athlete that won a gold medal in Athens and I was uh, watching them in the TV and dreaming to play one day with them. 
and uh, so I I I was happy just to make passes with them you know uh, these I think make the difference when uh, when you respect and you love so much uh, yeah. what are you doing and with the people that you are are you doing this talking about uh, London 2012 and your first Olympic experience how special was that for you it was very 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 special also because uh, in uh, the year before, uh, they asked me to go in a um, uh, university in the uh, USA, uh, in the college. So I said no, because my dream was to go to the Olympics. And I know that it was a big, uh, it was hard to say no, because also this was a dream. But uh, the Olympics is like... Uh, uh, when you are baby and you are dreaming, uh, maybe one day I can do it. And when the opportunity is very close to you, you don't want to lose it. And when we qualified uh, for uh, for the Olympic Games, we were in uh, Trieste, and uh, I was just waiting for the moment for the ceremony uh, to enjoy everything. But uh, I can tell you that um, in, in these Olympics, the Olympic won on me because it was huge. And the pressure, the, the emotion, everything that you can imagine inside of this world uh, was above me. And I like uh, was, uh, you cannot breathe, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. These helped me a lot to live different uh, the the olympic games in rio i it was like was was a really hard uh, but you you know you are not alone when you are doing this you are um, with the, um, the psychologists in the team that help you a lot and uh, she was uh, told me to me that go to the olympics is like uh, to be close in one, uh, you know, pasticceria uh, where you are uh, selling the sweets. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, you can think, oh my God, I'm close inside and I cannot go out. Or think, okay, I mean, what I can do? Uh, enjoy this. Because uh, the, the emotion that you are living there is something huge. Uh, it's also difficult to describe and uh, I said okay we qualified in Rio I don't want to live the same like in London I I want to enjoy every day every smell every color that I see I want to remember and uh, this was the key I think uh, I was going to the restaurant to eat and I was uh, walking like, okay, I'm here. I'm an athlete that can win a medal with my teammate. And I want to um, make the people feel it. Not that you are small and the Olympic is above you. you know, I don't know if I can explain. Yeah, that. yeah, no, I, I understand. I understand. It's, um, it's, it's really well put. So you, you would say in short that the difference between Rio and London was perhaps your mindset yeah your psychology exactly. yeah that was the big difference i mean um what that that psychologist needs a pay rise wherever they are because you obviously won a silver medal which is fantastic only yeah. losing to uh, one of the best american teams and there's a lot of very good yes. american teams, <laughs> teams. so like, no shame to lose to lose that game but not only did you perform well you went home with a medal how how, how fantastic was that for you uh, was uh, I think I didn't uh, sleep for uh, for weeks because I was like, oh my god, maybe it's a dream, and uh, I woke up and it's not real. Uh, it was amazing. Like uh, you feel so proud of yourself, of your your teammate, uh, because the, the way to arrive there is very hard, and you understand also because Olympics are every four years because the. Uh, the power that you need to arrive there is huge. The energy, physically and mental, is huge. It's not something that you can do every year. 
and to arrive on the top of the mountain is uh, something that okay this is paying for what i did until now yeah yeah and obviously the highs of standing on the podium with the silver fast forward for five years um and we're talking about tokyo and um i mean obviously italy didn't qualify but i think there's more to it than that especially when it comes to you i mean most people were very shocked very surprised that you weren't part of the team that went to the qualifying tournament did that shock you or did you were you expecting it were you surprised as we were, for example? No, I it was a shock for me because, uh, of course, I was doing my practice uh, like always. So I was giving myself 100%. But, uh, you know, uh, when you are doing this kind of sport, the last word is uh, on a person that is above you, your boss, your coach. So this was his uh, choice and the decision for the best for Italy. So I respect it. And uh, I said to my teammate that I was with them. My energy was with them because uh, I, to go to the Olympics is something too much important. So I was trying to give what I, c I could do from home. It's different and difficult from the sofa where you can, you can only watch the game and pray for them. And so, yes, it was very hard because, you know, you cannot do anything, just uh, yeah. stay, stay yeah. close to the team. Yeah. There's a, there's a few aspects I want to kind of unpick here, but firstly, you personally, um, I mean, you spoke about your coach ultimately doing what he felt was best for Italy, for the national team, uh, Paolo Ziza. He is on the record saying, basically, uh, I'm paraphrasing, it's not his exact words, but not picking you was incredibly painful. I'm sure not as painful as it was for you not to be on the roster. But did you take any time off after... Um, after hearing you weren't in the squad, did you think, uh, did you reevaluate how you view water polo or did you just straight away the day after, straight back in the pool, training hard? Uh, it was hard, but I was so mad that uh, I didn't think neither one second to quit water polo. I was like, okay, I will show you that you did a mistake. Um, I didn't want to stop because I felt that I had something to give to this sport uh, and i took the time to rebuild my mind and then i go back in catania and i start to make practice and uh, fight to have my spot in the team again yeah yeah i mean and you know as we said as we as everyone knows obviously italy missed out uh at the qualification tournament and you know when you've you've missed out on going to that competition you've been training hard if they qualify the uh, the opportunity to go to the olympics is still there yeah um but obviously they didn't qualify and so how disappointed were were you for that uh, that you wouldn't get an opportunity to restake a claim in the team to go to the olympics um and and how did it feel not being able to affect what was going on you were probably watching the games at home yeah um on the sofa maybe with a <laughs> yes. cushion in your it hand. was a hard i was screaming i was uh, cheering uh, i was uh, trying to 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 send them my my energy but it was not easy at all because when you play this sport for for 15 years uh, uh don't be in the team like this was very hard I cannot hide uh, from this. And the, the worst was that I realized after that I didn't have the opportunity to play for my third uh, Olympic Games. So you accept this because you cannot do anything different. You can just uh, try to rebuild yourself and uh, start again what you do for all, for all your life. Yeah. And OK, so you don't qualify. Uh, the Italian national team don't qualify for the Olympics um, that summer. So last summer we're talking about 
uh, it's a chance for the team to reset, to refresh. Um, Ziza leaves, and obviously uh, Carlo Salipo comes in and takes the reins uh, of the national team. Um, you were training last summer as a team. Obviously, you were there and the team were there. What was the atmosphere like? Was there a real uh, urge for you guys to to put put the wrongs right and move forward or was everyone very down in the dumps and it wasn't a very nice place to be i have to tell you that the last summer we the uh, old one <laughs> that old we are not but uh, didn't go to the um, preparation the coach told us that he want to see the team without uh, without us he wanted to to see what uh, was the reaction of the team in one summer without competition. So we had uh, one summer off, but from national team, but we still had practice alone at home uh, because in September we knew that uh, he could call us back. So we, we wanted to be ready for this. And uh, this is what happened. Like uh, in September, uh, he called us back and he said, okay, let's try to see what uh, can happen with you in the team. And uh, I said, okay, if I have one chance to be in the team, I will play and work for it. Of course you did. And are we now starting to see, you know, in the team at the moment, we've got a mix of a, a few younger players some more experienced players like yourself. Are we starting to see things click a little bit for Italy and the Seta Rosa? You know, the, almost like they're taking their revenge, uh, seeing the energy and the, the desire from the failure of not making the Olympics to now falling very, very short, very, very close to the Netherlands at the World Championships. Played really well at the World League European Finals in Tenerife. Are we starting to see um, a bit of development in the Italian national team? Yeah, I think uh, the the new team is uh, um, can be really strong because the young are really good and they have a fresh energy that I think is what we need. Um, in uh, Budapest, we were really close to win a medal after many, many years after Rio. Uh, only one silver medal in World League we won in 2020. So we, we know that we are fighting to be back again, like uh, to feel uh, that you are heavy in the water polo world. One thing I just want to speak about as well, just before we move on to um, talking about the immediate future, is is about the culture and the, the tactics of the Italian team. When we think of Italian water polo and we think of Italian sport uh, to that end, we, we think of really well-drilled, tactically accomplished players and teams, often with an emphasis on defence. Uh, is this something that you're very aware of when you train and... Um, do you have an opinion on it? Do you mind playing in a team that plays in in this kind of way? I love the way that uh, we we do our water polo because it's very yeah, like you said, tactic, mental. Because we make a lot of um, hours of tactic to uh, try the same movement until uh, you can play like. Uh, without seeing your teammate in the eyes. Like, you don't need anything more because you try so much time that you can just feel your teammate, uh, what she's doing, and you can read her mind. And I agree with them, so we, we are uh, one of the best uh, team to do this kind of defense and help us Many times uh, in the past, uh, we won a lot of medals because also the defense was uh, very strong and you can keep your power in the offense when you are so strong in defense. Okay, well, as I said at the beginning and as we've spoken about a little bit, you've been, uh, you're back at home, but you're tr uh, preparing for the tournament in Sardinia. Um, but it's all building towards the Euros in September. So um, I guess the a big question we have for you, Julia, is how important is it to make sure that Italy 
uh, get back to where they belong and are winning a medal after a, a bit of a spell without um, a significant medal, how important is it for the national team to win something in split? It's very important because uh, we need it like uh, to have a brief of oxygen. Like, uh, okay, finally we can uh, brief again because we deserve it. I am sure that uh, we are doing our best, but um, the level is very high. Like all the European teams are very strong. So uh, it's hard, but it's also beautiful for this reason because you are you you know that nobody give present to you so if you are gonna win a medal you know that you did the, the best of yourself and you beat the best team in europe how are the team feeling are they is everyone positive are, are you confident you know as i said you narrowly missed out a medal at the world champs um but i mean one of the highlights for me being in Budapest was watching that game against Hungary, which was uh, an incredible um, evening and a massive upset. So how how confident are all the team feeling? What's the atmosphere like? We are um, growing uh, day by day, like uh, uh, taking confidence, like we can do something special. We have to believe it first and then to show to the world. And... Um, I think the World Championship helped us like, uh, uh, to understand that we can do and everything, but also we need something more to arrive to, to the podium, to, to the big step, to win a medal. Um, you never stop learning and you never stop uh, uh, make practice because you know that other teams are not uh, like uh, holidays and uh, arrive uh, just for the tournament. They are doing the same like you and everybody do gym, do practice in the water. I think the difference is that the team that is uh, strongest in their mind, uh, like uh, athlete and like team, will be the best. Okay, okay. And we'll, we'll obviously see if Italy uh, are up to it. Um, We'll take a break now and we'll come back in a minute with some questions that people have sent in on social media. Okay. Welcome back to part two of the Total Water Polo podcast. This is the section of the episode where we put our questions to our guests, which today is Julia Omalo. Julia, we've got some questions on social media that we're going to ask you. But before we do that, we ask all of our guests to give their dream team. So seven players, uh, their favorite seven players to make to make a team, their total seven. Um, it can be people you've played with or against or you've never played with um they can be retired or, or still playing so um you've got seven players to pick and uh yeah the floor wow is it's hard you didn't prepare myself uh, <laughs> because i i have more than seven seven athletes that uh, i unfortunately i get this every week people don't prepare and they end up reading out a name uh, you know 20 players but you, you you do have to you can have maybe 10 players you can okay. have a squad of players if you like Okay, oh, wow. Um, for sure, I have to say uh, the best player that I play next to her, that is Tania Di Mario, that uh, was an, an honor to play against, um, sorry, next to him, them. And um, then uh, is uh, a player that I played with this year, that is Bronti Alligan, that she is uh, amazing. Yeah. And um, Maddie Masselman. And uh, for sure, Rita Castelli. Mm. Then uh, Elefteria Plevritu. You're one of your sisters. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And um, like center, uh, Maika Garcia. Yeah. And uh, um, one player that 
is not playing anymore, but for me it was one of the best uh, uh, was uh, uh, Sadman. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I um, I have seven person. Yeah, but you don't have a goalkeeper. Ah, I mean, yes, who's going to The goal? goalkeeper. Oh wow! Uh, I played with uh, Julia Gorlero, and I I cannot say her name. Uh, I cannot hide her name because for me it was one of the best uh, goalie. Uh, you, you almost did though. You almost did hide her name by not including her. But apart from that, no. it looks like a pretty strong team. I was not thinking about the goalie. I was just thinking about the player next to me in. Uh, Imagine a roster. That's 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 fair enough. Um, okay, you've got a team of eight players, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, you did obviously mention um, Tanya Di Mario, um, a great player, obviously. But now, obviously, she's involved with the club uh, in, in Catania and ov obviously the Italian Federation as well. Um, does she still help you on the side? Does she still give you advice? Do you go to her for advice or...? Okay, really she's like really busy for uh, because of her job, but uh, last year she helped us a lot at the end of the season. Uh, she was doing practice with us, and this year she came and she played with us uh, when um, COVID uh, uh, killed us before the uh, group uh, of Europa Cup. So um, it's like she never stopped to be next to me. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can imagine I can imagine that. Um, okay, we'll move on then. Um, who, in your opinion, is the best young talent in Italy at the moment? So obviously, um, we've got players. There's a few juniors. I say juniors; they're not juniors. They're in the senior team at the moment, but there are obviously some uh, some of the the girls away in Belgrade playing at the moment. Are there any of any of those players that uh, catch your eye a little bit? I think. Uh... Um, one young really ca ca that can be she's strong but she can be really really strong is uh, Daphne Bettini she was not in uh, Budapest because she had the exams at school uh, but she played with me in Catania this year and I think she can be a really strong player we'll watch out for her obviously she moved to Catania a few years ago and is doing really well Okay, we've got a question here a little bit about um, about you personally when you didn't get picked for the uh, qualification tournament. Um, that was a bit of a setback, but do you think it helped you to become a better player, a better athlete? Yeah, I think yes. Uh, I think uh, that when you have a bad experience like this, um, if you find the best way to... Uh, move move forward is um, something that can um, make you learn better than a winning than a win something like this. Yeah, yeah, okay. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's good. No, it's good. It's good. It's fine. If you yeah. find the the way to um, realize that you can you can show to 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 yourself and to the world that water polo. Uh, can be your life uh, for other years. You can uh, you can use this for like energy. Okay, okay, nice answer. Um, earlier on, uh, you said that um, you would always advise younger players to go and play abroad. Obviously, you've done that. But the question here uh, basically asks: You're thirty now. Could you see yourself playing abroad? One more time, maybe? And for who? Uh, I would like to... I would like to go back in Olympiacos. I would like to try uh, uh, in another country like Spain. Uh, it's something that is uh, a kind of dream, but I cannot because of the job. So will be a dream and uh, it's fine that I did it uh, for three years. So, so maybe maybe I misunderstood. Your your job now cannot allow you to go out of go Italy. Abroad. You can play in the club, but only in Italy. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. a that's a big uh, that's a that's a big commitment. 
Okay. Um, and outside of water polo, what do you what do you spend your time doing when you're not training and you're you're not on podcasts? And <laughs> like I I'm, I'm studying. I three years ago I decided to start my university. So this year in February I finish. I will finish, and um, it's something. Uh, it was a bet for myself because I start to study again after ten years that I stop with the school. But um, it's something that uh, uh, I wanted so much, and I'm so proud of myself because now I miss only one exam, and I cannot believe it that I did it. <laughs> okay, cool. And away from that. Um... Any other hobbies? Do you have any other things that you enjoy doing? Um, I love watch all the other sports. I love cooking, and my boyfriend is a chef. So, uh, like a perfect Italian, I love to cook for myself and for the others. Okay, and what do you what do you cook? What's your what's your uh, speciality dish? I I love cook sweets, cake, uh, just. The I think the the easy is the best, uh, like uh, apple pie or uh, mm, spaghetti with fresh tomatoes. Uh, uh, when you use the best uh, ingredient, the the dish is uh, is make alone. Okay, okay, yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And now and now I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, let's let's move on. Um, what do you think, in your opinion, is the highlight of your career? What, what of all the medals, maybe or maybe not a medal? What, what moment do you, do you think you'll look back on and say that was that that was the best moment of my career? Uh, for sure, the year um, Kazan and uh, Rio. I was feeling so good in the water. I can remember the feeling that I was just flying in the water. You know, when you can understand that you are powerful, you you are strong, you are fast. Uh, and this was the best uh, moment of my career. Good, good. And one last thing. Do you think that you will ever be a coach? Do you think you'll ever coach water polo one day? Could we see you on the, the sidelines? I, ha- I was. I was uh, with the young um, in my yeah. club in Imperia. I had the opportunity to be a coach for uh, for the young team, and it was uh, super funny. Uh, I think that I like uh, more the the young, like uh, nine, eight years old, because they they give you so much that you cannot un- you cannot imagine, like. Uh, uh, they are happy for the small things, just uh, to give them a ball and the post and say, okay, today we're going to shoot. They were so happy. And I I had the best time. Okay, okay. so you, you, you think if you did coach, it would be at that age group, it wouldn't be the stroppy teenagers or, or seniors? <laughs> no, I think I prefer the young. It's the difficult part, but uh, maybe... Uh, is the the most important the young uh, coach are so important for uh, for the future definitely definitely agree all right julia thank you very much uh that's all the questions thank you very much for joining us you've been fantastic and uh we look forward thank to you. seeing you in split yeah i hope ciao well that one was uh was a lot of fun actually julia you can see she's really passionate about water polo of course as most uh, of the top players are but you can see she's got an energy about her the way she speaks about the game her teammates uh, I love that chat and I I learned a lot from that and I hope you guys did too and we wish Julia and all of her teammates the best of luck as they head to split in hope of hopefully getting a medal uh, a long overdue medal if uh, if I might say but thanks for listening guys uh, thank you so much for your support I really hope you enjoyed that as much as I did Um, make sure you use the discount code podcast10 at werewaterpolo.com and of course follow us stay subscribed wherever you get this podcast from you won't want to miss the next one we have a really exciting guest coming up which I'm sure will be announced in a few days so stay tuned stay safe thank you very much for listening and we will see you next time bye bye